of equal importance, the North China Plain, currently home to 400 million people, and one of the great centers of Chinese agriculture, industry, and indeed culture, uh, is going to become possibly the least habitable place on the planet. Beginning in around 2060, 2070, China's, North, the North China Plain is going to experience the first of five episodes of wet bulb temperature of 35 degrees centigrade. Now, what does that mean? That means that the balance of heat and humidity comes together so that a healthy human being, you know, seated, not working, not moving, is dead in six hours, all right? Um, and then there are going to be hundreds of incidents of extreme heat. So as China is battered by climate change, one of the core centers of its population becomes less habitable. There will be great population movement in China. China is going to withdraw its resources and its military forces inward and have to deal with its own climate change. Great. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna have to stop there, Professor McCoy. More brothers. And you know, when I, I've just heard this, because listening to RT, and I may play the uh, whole entire video because it's actually interesting talking about uh, the shift in global dominance. But right at the end, he mentioned something uh, about China. But it could have ramifications all over the world. He was talking about the high China plain and it's going to um, suffer when they, what they call wet bulb culture. I didn't understand what he said because it wasn't pronounced very well, so I actually looked it up. But actually, it's quite interesting because he said at 35 degrees Celsius uh, in, in 100% humidity, uh, any human being will be uh, dead within six hours because you can't dissipate heat. So I found an article on Medium talking about it. So I'm going to share this with you and see if we can get something out of it. Climate change, wet bulb temperature, 35 degrees Celsius. A climate change term we may all come to know well. The aspects of climate change often not discussed is the direct impact on humans and mammals of heat stress. Temperature and humidity are rising. And at wet bulb, at a wet bulb temperature of 35 degrees Celsius, people's bodies can't dissipate metabolic heat. They then suffer from hypothermia overheating. At wet, a wet bulb temperature is measured with a standard thermometer covered with a wet cloth while ventilated, indicating the temperature at 100 degrees humidity. Wet bulb or temperature wet TW is a measure of temperature and humidity combined. Fascinating. Humans maintain an internal body temperature of 37 degrees Celsius, which is 98 degrees, with a skin temperature kept at 35 degrees Celsius or below, which is about 90 degrees. With skin cooler than the internal core temperature, heat can be lost to the skin. Heat from metabolism is lost from the body and skin by heat conduction evaporated cooling and infrared radiative cooling. The wet bulb temperature of 35 degrees Celsius is the temperature and humidity at which humans and mammals will become overheated with potential death at 42 to 43 degrees internal body temperature. Conduction and evaporation cooling can't occur as a result of the temperature and humidity respectively being too high. Wet bulb globe temperature, WBGT, is another index for measuring heat stress. It is often used in industry and includes the other factors of the amount of physical activity, the environment characteristics, e.g. sun angle, cloud cover, and the clothing worn. TW has been chosen here because it establishes a limit at which these other factors, including WBGT, are ineffective. The highest wet bulb temperature reached anywhere on Earth is about 30 degrees C, this is probably because of a conductor's instability mechanism, which can occur with high temperature and humidity, which result in storm activity that cools air near the surface, but many areas of Earth have a very low storm activity and low rainfall. A climate change increase in air temperature of seven degrees is possible by 2100, pushing the wet bulb temperature to 35, whilst Sokolov et al. projects 5.4 degrees air temperature rise by 2091 to 2100. Warming will continue to increase past 2100 if emissions of carbon dioxide continue. Okay, here's a diagram about heat, heat, heat exhaustion. Heat exhaustion, he says, can we can actually uh, occur within six hours. 
and heat stroke is is almost immediate. One is at uh, 100 degrees Fahrenheit, and one is a little under 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow, look at all the areas that could uh, suffer from um, TW Max, which is, Jesus Christ, look at half of the United States. Half of the United States could suffer from this. Half the United States, all of India, uh, most of China, well, most of the globe, period. Look at that, man. It's, uh, that's <laughs> the only, if, if this is the case, the only places will be spared is uh, parts of Europe and, and Russia. I mean, white people will inherit the earth. Maybe that's why they're trying to foster uh, carbon emissions. Okay, they'll, they'll be the only ones left standing. Interesting. Uh, many tropical, subtropical, and some desert areas are likely to be affected by increasing TW with areas around the world being made uninhabitable. One example is the Arabian Gulf region, the source of much of which the world's oil and gas is likely to have the conditions approach and exceed wet bulb 35 degree C limit of survivability for more than six hours. That's what he was talking about. Under the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IP. CC representative concentration pathway, RCP trajectory, RCP by 8.5 by 2071 and 2100. Specific areas predicted to be affected are low coastal areas of the Arabian Sea, the Red Sea, the Persian Gulf in the boreal summer, uh, July, August, September, warm northwesterly winds from Turkey and Iraq blow across the Gulf, gaining moisture and increasing the TW in many Gulf states. Gulf cities, Abu Dhabi, Dubai, Doha, Lorain, and Bandar Abbas. Oil has brought wealth to the region, which can pay for electricity and air conditioning, but under these extreme TW conditions, it makes the reliability of electricity supply life threatening. Other countries are not so wealthy, with poor, many poor, not able to afford air conditioning, such as Yemen, the Yemen coastal region, and the cities of Al Hadida and Aden. They're expected to reach TW of 33 degrees in extreme years, which could lead to death in children and in the elderly. Regions vulnerable to increasing temperature and humidity include Southeast Asia, Southeastern United States, Northern Australia, Southern China. That's what we're saying. He was actually talking about Southern China, Eurasia, Southern Europe, Central Africa, and Latin America under the IPCC. RCP 8.5 emission scenario by 2081 to 2100 with air temperature rise of 2.6 to 4.8 centigrade. A high temperature and humidity TW in regions may be detrimental to human health in summer and will certainly affect social and economic activities and will be a lot worse in the countries not able to afford it to adapt to the climate changes. Okay, that is fascinating. That is fascinating. That is from the medium Peter Miles. I will try to put the link in the description if I remember it. But uh, that's fascinating. Another thing to put in your arsenal. Another term to put in your arsenal. I'll try to, I'll try to clip the um, the end of the interview uh, on um, Russia Times to actually give you the place where I got it from. But it's something that about climate change that they don't tell you. A lot of the earth is actually becoming desert. It really is. And he actually mentioned that a lot of the earth was becoming desert in um, in his um, in his talk. So they talk about climate change. They're not affecting us some climate change deniers. But the thing is, whether you believe in it or whether you don't. OK, just like COVID, whether you believe in it or whether you don't, you got to take precautions. Even if you don't believe in it, you, know, you think it's a hoax, that it's bullshit. Stay informed. Keep an eye on it. It may or may not be viable, but I can tell you in California, if they didn't spray these goddamn clouds, man, California would be a, a freaking desert, okay? Uh, California's going through its worst drought in 1,200 years. I have never seen it this dry. You know, I've been living in, in Cali, man, for, God, it's gotta be 57 years. I've never seen a streak of dry weather like this. So something's up. You know, they have to spray the clouds just to get it to rain. Sums up, but we'll see. But that's that's all I got for this one. This is BGS out, and I'll see you guys on the next one.